In the foreground, a loaded car shuttle waits to depart, and another enters from the tunnel. On the left, a meter gauge train is leaving for Andermatt. The first coach is still in Schölenenbahn paint, although this line has been part of the Fürke Oberalp for six years. We shall continue our journey on a car shuttle. These have the loco on the south end of the train and a passenger coach with driving cab at the north end. Car occupants remain in their vehicles. Car shuttles ceased operating through the Gotthard Tunnel once the parallel motorway tunnel came into use, but you can still try the experience through the Lurchberg Tunnel or on a meter gauge car shuttle through the Fürke Base Tunnel. Our car shuttle will take 15 minutes to traverse the 15 km Gotthard Tunnel. Ordinary passenger trains are allowed 11 or 12 minutes. That's an AE35 loco, known as a Petit Secheron, built in 1924 and adapted in later years for push-pull operation. While at Aerolo, we shouldn't forget the memorial to the workers who were killed in the fairly primitive conditions during the construction of the big tunnel. We'll resume our journey on another local train, again in the rear cab. This is now Canton Ticino. Italian is spoken here. And often the weather can be quite different too on the southern side of the main alpine chain. The mountain section, Erstfeld to Biasca, was electrified in 1920 with single phase alternating current. At first this was 7,500 volts while some steam trains still ran under the wires. The voltage was raised the following year to the Federal Railway's standard 15,000 volts after the adjoining sections were energised and the effects of steam engine exhaust no longer had to be considered. Now for a rather mixed up train. We're in the Val Leventina. This is a fairly level part, but after the next station we will come to a steep downward step. The waters of the river Ticino enter the pressure pipes of the Lavorgo power station here, above the two spiral tunnels by which we descend the Dazio Grande Gorge. Here's a relic of the steam age, a water column between the main lines. It may have been used since electrification to supply the steam-powered rotary snowplow used in severe winter weather. La Vorga station was being enlarged and modernised, so this semaphore signal wouldn't be in place for much longer. 
This narrow valley now accommodates the four-lane motorway, slightly higher than the railway and on the opposite side. We are approaching another big step down, needing two more spiral tunnels. Since filming, the views here have become dominated by a very high motorway viaduct leaping boldly across the valley. The mid-train pantograph is on the restaurant car. Left into the first spiral and out onto the middle shelf. And emerge from the lower spiral to cross the river Ticino. Now look back at this marvel of 1880s engineering. Below Giornico, we cross the river Ticino, and we will remain on its east bank for the rest of our ride to Bellinzona. The traditional Swiss operating method needed large signal bells at all stations. Their coded musical messages told everyone of train movements. Like this one, the bells were often to be found between stations. Now for a tantalising glimpse of the meter gauge Biasca Aquarosa line, which closed in 1973. Biasca is the end of the steeply graded mountain section. As at Erstfeld, there is a yard for reforming freight trains on a tonnage basis. From Airola to Biasca, our train has descended 2,874 feet in 28 miles. But we are still among mountains. This is the 9,700 foot Torrento Alto. At stations where passengers must cross the tracks, any other train must be held outside by signal until they have boarded. Many Swiss stations have been rebuilt in recent years to avoid such delays. Now we are arriving at historic Bellinzona, the capital of Canton Ticino. In addition to its yards and running shed, Bellinzona is home to important overhaul and repair workshops of the Swiss Federal Railways.